Now, long-time observers of uh, global geopolitics have long been aware of uh, North Korea's nuclear ambitions. Uh, can you give an overview of North Korea's actions up to this point? Sure, no problem. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, long-time observers have have, have been uh, ha- have had this awareness. But if you look at North Korea's historical, uh, you know, uh, position, its history, it's it's been a, a, a an independent kingdom for a long, long time. So. It's only recently in the last uh, century, uh, the last century, of course, being the the most tumultuous time for North Korea um, uh, since the occupation of um, of Japan in 1905 after the uh, Russo-Japanese War. So that was the really upsetting, that war after that war and the Japanese occupation was a really upsetting factor for North Korea that's really begun the modernization of of what we know as the Korean Peninsula um, dispute uh, as, as we see it. Um, so Japan occupied that country for five years. Um, and, uh, and yeah, it's, it's, it's been, uh, it's been a problem since then. So following World War Two, which is edging in now into modern history, um, career, career, as we, uh, as we know, was split, uh, with the Northern half coming under the Soviet sponsored communist control. Um, this was backed up by, uh, you know, uh, the, the Russia or, or the USSR. And uh, in uh, 50 to 53, uh, the U.S.-backed Republic of Korea uh, was was now uh, splitting off from Northern Korea, uh, from North Korea, well, Northern Korea um, in that time. Um, because, yeah, so it, the nor- Northern, uh, the DPRK, so the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, uh, ha- was founded by uh, President Kim Il Sung, uh, Kim Sung Tu the second, and Kim Sung Tu was uh, a very important figure in modern history in the modern Korea because he he not only founded uh, modern North Korea but he also founded the Kim Dynasty, the uh, the family den- dynasty that would carry up until now what we know as this continuing line of of political dominance in that country. Um, so uh, you know he he bege- he adopted this policy of self reliance. He adopted this policy of checking North Korea against all external forces, whether that be China, whether that be Japan, whether it be South Korea, United States, Russia, or the USSR at that time. Um, and uh, you know he used a lot of propaganda, a lot of hate, uh, uh, demonization politics to sort of consolidate power uh, for himself and his family. Um, so playing on from that, we hit the 60s, and the 60s is where it really begins because the 60s is where you start to get nuclear weapons coming into play, which takes us up to the current um, strategic uh, issues. Um, and so the, the 60s is when... Uh, uh, the 60s is when... Uh, all of the geographic problems that North Korea faces, they they sort of outsource these problems to nuclear weapons, and nuclear weapons for for North Korea became a multi-purpose uh, instrument for the regime's security. Um, they 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 the, the 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 DPRK government sort of used these goals uh, for deter, well, new, these uh, these nuclear weapons to deter adversaries uh, with its arsenal or. Generating revenue was another one um, from nuclear commerce. Uh, you know, we had we've had in the recent um, in, in recent times since 2008 a lot of uh, bilateral relations between the DPRK and and Syria, for example, especially with centrifuges and things like that, um, and uh, creating a, a sort of a North Korean version of you know. Uh, President D. 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 White Eisenhower's new look policy, which was very much linked in with the Monroe Doctrine for the policy geeks out there who know that the Monroe Doctrine was all about European colonization in the Americas, and America wanted to be the have a monopoly on that. Well, the DPRK wanted the sort of same same deal uh, in that sense. So you know we've we've had uh, we've had this continually uh, uh, contracting North Korea. It's it's total separation from the outside world. 
um, up till now. You know, Kim Kim um, Kim the second. Um, he 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 died, and uh, you know, um, in, in 1994. And Kim Un was publicly unveiled as a father's successor in, in 2010. This is getting up to where we are. Um, following Kim John Un's uh, death, um, we we've seen a spat of uh, of uh, you know ICBM uh, ICBM. Um, attempted uh, submarine ballistic missile um, uh, uh, cases and things like that, but it's just a, it's just a, an increased uh, increased efforts to meet the goal of improving you know convention uh, their, their 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 nuclear ambitions. Um, and so I see I, what I've seen is I've seen up to this point I've seen an increasingly isolated North Korea. Um, and, and an increasingly hostile world towards an increasing. It's like this this cycle of um, of, of they can't escape from their history, uh, and, and so they have been further and fur- uh, putting more and more uh, energy into these and more and more resources into into bolstering their nuclear capabilities, and that's what the world is worried about. Well, the first North Korean uh, nuclear crisis was back in, I believe, 1994 when Bill Clinton was president. And uh, it's also a pro- a probably uh, played a part in uh, North Korea's nuclear ambition as the fact that yeah, the Soviet Union collapsed in uh, 1991, which meant that uh, a lot of uh, their trade uh, was cut off and there, there was an economic... well. Well, you wouldn't say downturn, but an economic collapse in the early 90s in North Korea as well that uh, really put its survival at stake. Absolutely. Um, absolutely. So uh, economics comes into this in a huge, uh, in a huge fashion. Um, the, 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 the economy has been mismanaged from day one. Um, they have no, um, you know, no industrial, uh, no industrial policy. Um, the world has slowly been choking them off. Um, that's not a fair. That's not a fair point because they were. The, the world has been uh, has adopted a strategic patience, sort of a, a trying to get them to trade. There's been lots of um, deals worked out with um, with the north and south for in, industrial zones and things like that. Um, uh, you know, um, they've they've tried to build religions around unity. Um, uh, through the uh, through the unification church and stuff like this, so they've tried they've tried a whole a bu- whole bunch of strategies to get these two countries working together, and econ- the ec- economics of it, yeah, is is is, is vital. But um, I think that the the leaders, the Kim family, has just sort of rode these out. Um, you know, um, they they you know they, they, they are the, one of the least open economies in the world and they do you know they face chronic food shortages economic problems uh, you know it, yeah i would agree that that this but but in in saying that they 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 used they used those crises to to attain more uh concessions from the outside world to bolster their nuclear uh ambitions and and nuclear projects in the short run anyway over the last 20 years or so so you know, um, it's it's a double sword. Uh, this 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 uh, you know um, the economy because they've used it. They've used their people as a bargaining chip in a way um, to to gain concessions from the outside world. Um, and so it's kind of like it's kind of like if they have a disaster, they use it appropriately. If they don't have a disaster, well. Then they have more money to, for their nuclear ambitions. So it's sort of this. Also, they using the economy and their civilians as a bargaining chip on that side. Whenever North Korea's nuclear program has uh, flared up since it, uh, as we mentioned, began in the early nineties, there's always been you know outrage from the international community. Yet we're still in this uh, situation, which begs the question: I mean, why have you know world leaders and particularly U.S. presidents allowed this situation to fester? There's a very interesting question, and I, I, I think I think it's one we're all thinking about now. Um, because we all kind of want to go back to the days of uh, of 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 quote unquote strategic patience, you know. Um, it, it, China, Ch- China, I think China couldn't do anything. 
Um, China, in, in since the 50s, um, has been developing its own uh, its own legs. Um, the Great Leap Forward is, was a disaster, and in, and and China has been dealing with a lot of internal political issues and its own building up its own uh, its own uh, base for internal you know internal harmonization. Um, uh, China has been uh, subject to multiple uh, uh, multiple um, catastrophes and civil wars and internal struggles, and it got eaten out by the uh, first Opium War and the second Opium War in the 1800s, and they got eaten out again by European col colonialization, only to just start to recover, and then again got invaded by Japan. So J China, China is hasn't had anything, hasn't had any ability or any legs to. Uh, to solve the crisis on its own, so China China can be ruled out um, f fairly fairly quickly. Um, but also, China has kind of agreed and used the uh, this ongoing peninsula battle between the North and South um, as a as a way to uh, stop um, you know the United States going right up to the border of China. Um, the United States can only go up as far as South Korea. And you know, and then they're stopped by North Korea as a, as a buffer state. So China has had no will to uh, to to fix this. So China has, you know, we we there has been talk in, in the intelligence community and things that China has been leaking, uh, you know, you know, vital strategic uh, information, especially on H bombs and things. The old government, especially. Um, uh, to North Korea to help them out, to give them assistance in this standoff. Um, now, uh, South Korea has allowed this to go on because they've been, they've essentially outpaced the, uh, the North so quickly um, that they've had, they, they haven't had an appetite for war. There's been no appetite for war. Plus they had to go through the war last, last time. And so they, they have been sort of, getting rich off peace. So they had no appetite for war. Um, Japan has also had no appetite for war. Japan has been under a peace doctrine under its constitution, Article 9, and it and also under the it's been under the American thumb. And also they kind of benefit from a standoff on the Korean Peninsula because, you know, if you put your real politic uh, glasses on, the South Koreans are actually a threat to Japan in the future. So, you know, this benefits Japan. America has done nothing about it because of because they've been uh, one uh, North Korea was never really a a threat, conventional threat and or nuclear threat in the past. So, you know, um it would almost uh, sort of be akin to a war crime if they did go in and invade this sort of very underfunded, corrupt country for no no real strategic gain. I, I mean, it would have just be massacre in a sort of a way. But the other reason is because they have just been so busy on all the other fronts throughout the um, 20th century. They were battling the Russians in the Soviet in the Cold War. Um, they were they were busy, uh, uh, you know, in South America. They were busy in the Middle East, uh, you know, with Iraq. They were busy in Afghanistan. They were busy with Zika. They were busy, uh, you know, uh, building alliances in Europe and things like this. And, and uh, so Americans have sort of been had a focus away from Asia. Um, and you sort of saw this come back a little bit with Obama's pivot to Asia strategy, where he pushed a few more assets here and there over to Asia. It wasn't a real success. Um, uh, you know, Trump's been much more uh, aggressive on, on Asia. Um but yeah, you, you've seen a sort of a, a busyness in other sections of the world by the United States, especially you know focusing on things like Iran. Um, um, uh, yeah, you know, so so North Korea just hasn't been near the top of the list of priorities. It's been um, far, you know, even now it's 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 threat is a little over exaggerated because you know because of the. Uh, uh, because of the new Trump doctrine, but at the same time, it's it's just been not near the top of the uh, agenda. And and they also North Korea never posed 
a threat to the trade between uh, the United States and Japan, the United States and South Korea, or the United States and China. So now that that's starting to come into play, now that they're starting to make threats towards, you know, uh, U.S. territories and things like Guam, uh, maybe, maybe Arkansas, maybe, maybe Alaska. They're not really sure if the uh, the missiles can get there or not. Um, this is why you've sort of seen a, a, a non-focus by the United States on North Korea. It's just it just hasn't been a high priority. It just hasn't it hasn't impacted anything on 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 uh, on the United States' agenda. Um, it doesn't impact your petrodollar cycle. It has nothing to do with trade. It has nothing to do with, uh, you know, empire expansion. Uh, anything. It, it's not. It's not a high priority. It's only now that we're really starting to see it lift up on that on that priority list. This has been an unshackled fast. Please like, comment, and subscribe. While you're here, grab our free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and visit theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.